Welcome to Python Science. My name is Furkan. Today we are going to learn lists in Python. List is a sequence data type in Python, probably the most common data type in Python, which we are going to use while coding. You may remember arrays from other programming languages. They are common and they are used for the collection of data with the same data type. In Python, we have an array type under NumPy module for arithmetic operations with scalar data. Lists and arrays are quite similar. Yet, there are some differences. Lists can contain different data types, while arrays must contain same data type only. Arrays are useful for applying arithmetic operations for all elements via the method, like subtracting, dividing, or any other mathematical method, while list doesn't have these methods. You have to put some loop and you have to make operations element-wise. Let's check some of the properties of the lists. Lists are ordered and iterable. Elements are reachable by the index number, like you can say lists index 0, 1, 2, 3. You can reach elements by index. Lists can contain any data type or object. You can put objects inside lists. Lists can be used as nested, one dimensional or two dimensions, three dimensions. It doesn't matter as much as you require, you can put inside a list. Lists are mutable. You can change the variables. You can add, you can remove. They are mutable for this way. Lists are dynamic. You can add at the end or at the beginning, or you can insert in the middle of the list, or you can remove a value from end or in the middle. Wherever you want to remove a value, you can remove this value to resize your list. Let's define some lists. We have two notation for defining lists, one with this brackets and one with list. In this, you can put some values inside your list, but at the second notation, you cannot put any value. It won't take the value for the list. You can put some string to convert it to the list. So let's define them. We have created some empty lists and types are both in the list. So if you want to define a list with some initial values, you must use this notation. Like here, use this one. Result will be a list, but if you use something like this for different elements, it will throw an error. But you can just put this one. List will take a single argument. So let's define one dimensional list here. What we have done, we have a list with the same data type and we have a list with different data type, integer, string, floating point numbers, and etc. So you can define your list with initial values like this. If you want to define your list empty, you can use both of these. But if you want to put some values, you should use these notations. We can also create some two or three dimensional lists. As you can see from here, uh, we have two dimensional list, list in a list. Like we have the master list with these parentheses. We have sub lists with these parentheses. Like this one is a list and the other one is a list. It goes like that. So how can we reach these elements? We have to use double indexes. First one for this. So it will start from zero. As you can remember from my previous tutorials, indexes are starts from zero. So zero, one, two, and three. It will be this one. And inside this list, it will be the second element, 0, 1, 2. It will be dh. So we have the dh here. So what else we have? We have three-dimensional list here. This will be a master list. And we have one dimension here. Uh, you can use mixed dimensions inside your list. It doesn't bother with that. If you want to use something like this for single element and here we have another two dimensional two dimensional list so what we have we have the master and we have some second dimension and the third dimension is here so how are we going to reach these elements let's try with this one it takes the first so zero and the first year it takes the second element from here one zero one two so it will take this one at the beginning and it will just return t-bone variable. So you can use nested lists like here. Also strings are in basic, uh, they are a subclass of list. So you can just convert them into list like here. As I told 
at the beginning you can put single argument into list method so when we do this it will take each character inside that string into a list so what is our type it's list because i just convert my string to a list what are our elements here we have all the elements exclamation marks spaces and all the letters inside our string so there are methods that you can use with this list data type they are very useful they are used often so let's check these methods at first we have list append it will add a new element at the end of list variable with the value of x if x is a list it will put a list for an element it will make two-dimensional array or three-dimensional array so what we have here extent extent will use it some collection it won't take any integer float or string you have to put something like list or sequence data type it will take all the elements and add at the end of list variable in here we have insert insert will take some index number and put x value in that index inside our list variable list.remove it will remove the first occurrence of value of x in the list variable if there is no x value inside our list it won't return anything it will just pass but if there is any it will take the first occurrence of x and remove it so what else we have we have a pop you can just pop elements pop will make the last element removed and return its value if you just give an index it will remove that index and take the value return it to you clear method will clear out all the elements inside our list also you can use something like this it will do the same thing list.index will search for x value inside our list variable and return its index to you you can also specify start and end for this search if it won't find any element with the x value it will return an error remember that you have to put some try catch or so what else we have we have list count method it will count the x values inside our list variable list.sort will sort all the elements with the same type you have to have a list with the same type if it's mixed type like string integer or float it won't work it has to have single data type inside itself so list.reverse will reverse the order of the list it doesn't care about the data types it will just uh, reverse your list list.copy will create a shadow copy let's go some examples so we have a pant method it will add some items some elements into our list so i am just creating an empty list here and putting a loop starts from 1 to 10 let's run it it will just append element at first it will just put one then two three four five it will just append at the end at some elements at the end of our list so we have extent method here let's run it as you can see if i use append it will just put whole array as an array element inside our uh, list so if i use extent method it will just put the values one by one to the end of list one so it's simply using these notations so these are just the definitions and print out some values you can just uh, go to my github profile and download this code and just play with it so what else we have we have insert method we are going to give index and the value and it's going to put that value inside that index number so let's run it if i put hello into my first element it will start from zero and it it's going to put at the one index so here we are also putting some value from the end of this string minus one will be the last character minus two will be the second last character so we are putting 3.4 remember here it's putting the same value and shifting other values to the end here it's putting and shifting so when it puts to the minus two it just push this to the end not the beginning it always push to the end insert method so here we are searching for an index so where is three in here it's at the end so if i put none 
to that index it will just put here and shift it to the end so we have a remove method we can remove elements from lists here we are removing hello so if i remove hello it will be like this from this i'm removing hello and it will just create a new list actually do, do the operation inside that list so if i remove two it will just remove two it won't search for characters it will search for an element it won't go there and remove these two it, it's just gonna remove element with the value of two so here we have pop method pop method will take the last element and remove it here we have the last element pm if i use pop method it will just take pm inside our last element value and it's going to remove it from the original list here i'm giving index number at one what we have adam so it's going to take the adam and remove it from the original list also we can use clear method if i use clear method it will delete all the values but the definition will still be there so we have the definition for the list it won't destroy all variable it will delete all the elements but the definition will be there so let's go to the index method we have a list so we are searching for banana inside that list to get the index number it's index number three so zero one two three it's correct so just use this method to find the index of your elements inside the list if there are multiple let's put some multiple values what will happen it's going to find the first element inside our list and it will return that it won't search all the elements if you want to take all the banana items from your list you have to create a loop and take banana items from that list so index of banana search starts from three so what we have zero one two three if i put four here it will throw in okay let's make it five ah we have this one sorry let's put four and it will throw an error because banana is not in the list you cannot find something that is not in the list with the index so what we have here apple pie we are going to search this from index one to index five so what if i put four here it's zero one two three and four will it work no it won't work because it's something like this so it takes the start value and end value will be like this so it won't take the end value it will take one two three but it won't take the fourth so it we are going to put five here to find this value so it's a little bit tricky with the index you have to play with it yourself and discover the potential of indexes let's let's check count method count method will count elements with the same value that are given as an argument to the count method so here we have a list with the values 1 2 1 1 1 1 1.2 and one string so when i put one as an integer here it will count only the integer values like here there are three it won't take this one if i want to count string values i have to put something like this and it will count my string values so it won't take this because it won't go inside our string it will check only the elements because these are the list methods they are not the methods for floating point numbers or string so they will consider everything as an element let's check sort method sort method will sort our elements if our lists are in same data type like all of the elements are integer float or string not mixed what i have here we have an integer array it's an array you can call that so when when i sort this it will sort that i have string list or array i can sort this it just sort that so here we have a string and i'm converting it to a list so if we have strings we have to use some special argument that is called key in order to have proper sorting so what will happen here 
if I use this function without the key, like here, it will first consider the uppercase, then take the lowercase. So there is P and there is P. It won't take both of them. So if I use key string lower, it will consider all of the values as lowercase and it will just sort them. So remember that if you are working with the strings to sort, you have to put something like that to here. Or you can just make your string lowercase as you remember or as I shown you in the strings tutorial. Okay, let's go to the reverse method. So it will simply reverse the whole list. It takes this value, put here, then this value, this value, and it, it's just reversing the list. Copy method. This is an interesting topic. It's brand new for you, I guess, because you are a beginner. We are checking some memory addresses for our variables. There are two things in Python, references and variables. If you have a variable with the values, it will have a memory reference. If you do not copy that collection or class or an object, you will get a reference assignment. So what we are doing here is called reference assignment. So let's check. These are having the same memory addresses like list 11 and list 12. Because what we have done here is a, is a reference assignment. So when I put some value inside my list 11, it will appear in list 12. So preventing this, we have to use shallow copy for our objects and sequences like list, tuple, sets. We have to use shallow copy in order to get a new array or new list or new tuple. Otherwise, it will just it will break our code and it won't make the consistency for our application. So this is an important topic. You have to make shallow copy with your objects, with your tuples, lists, and any other type of sequences. Okay, here, what are we going to do? We are taking the shallow copy of list 11 into list 13. So both of these having different memory addresses. If I put something inside list 11, it won't be in list 13. So this part is very important for a beginner or advanced in any other person. So you have to consider this as an important case and learn this at the beginning. Otherwise, you will suffer a lot. So here I have some bonus parts. They are not the methods. They are just operations on lists. So they are very useful. They are very handy when you are programming something. So let's learn them. If you want to reach a list item, we use something like this as you as I shown you at the beginning of this tutorial. So if you want to have a slice of a list, we can use these. All of these will create a slice of a list. You can read them. You can download this code from my GitHub profile, link in the description. So let's check some of the examples. So what are we doing here? First, we are reaching an element with index at the third, zero, one, two, three so we are taking non value correct what do we have here we have three to five we have a slice of a list so three here or and it won't take the last one because it will work like that or none and the hello value so what we have here we have a slice starts from the third and goes all the way to the end so it, it took all of the elements from three to the end so here what we have we have all the elements from the beginning to the third element it won't take the last so here is an interesting method if you use if you use something like this with two it will give you the even index number of elements so zero two four and it goes like that okay it will take the even number in the indexes it will start from zero two four and six here what we have we have a reverse of list so it will just reverse the list this one is also an interesting one so if you want to have a slice of a list from index one to the six and by three elements like from here we are starting we are taking two and going one two three and taking that so zero one two three four and five it will stop there what if i put 10 here it won't go there because it will jump by three one two three one two if i put something here it will take that too because what what is happening so it takes this one one two three this one will take in one two three this one is also taken okay so perfect 
So let's jump to the searching in list. We can search some values inside our list. It has to be data type dependent and lower uppercase dependent. Remember that. So let's search some strings. What do we have here? Data in list 15. So do we have data? Yes, here we have. So it will return true. Here, gathering. We have gathering inside one of our string elements, not as an element. So it will return false. Here we have lowercase data. Do we have lowercase data here? No. So it will return false. What do we have here? 34 as an integer, not in the list. We can use this method too. So do we have 34 here? No, we don't have. What are we asking? Not in. So it will be true. Let's go to the last one getting maximum, minimum, and length of list. We have a list like this. It has to be integer in order to get max, min, integer or float, numeric types. All the elements has to be in numeric parts with not something like this. So if I run this, it will throw error because it doesn't have all the numeric types inside itself. So it's taking the maximum value and minimum value and length of our list, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I start from zero as an index, but the length will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it will count all the elements. It won't start from zero, the length. List data type is over. I hope you like my tutorial. If you like my tutorial, click on the like button. If you like my channel and want more of these videos, do not forget to subscribe my channel. And if you want to have this code, go to my GitHub profile. The link in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.